Hi students, welcome to DS Economics channel. Today we are going to discuss 2022 January Kerala said economics previous year question. This is your part number three, last part of uh, January 2022. Uh, in this part, we are going to discuss from question number 81 to 120 in last part. So uh, let's start the video. First question is 81 number question. Each producer supplies one third of the market at a common price which is lower than the monopoly price is the stable solution attained in Connaught, Botten, Stackelberg or Chamberlain duopoly model. So question asks for each producer supplies one third of the market. So each producer produce one third of the market. It is uh, in the Connaught duopoly model. Connor Duopoly model says that the each producer supplies one third of the market at a common price which is lower than the monopoly price. It is the stable solution attained by Connor model. So option A is right. Then question number 82. Uh, peritian efficiency or parity efficiency, peritian efficiency criterions are held well under which of the market situation? Monopsony, monopolistic competition, perfect competition or bilateral monopoly. In which market parity and efficiency criterion held well or we can say perform better. So monopsony means single buyer, monopsony, single buyer, monopolistic competition, perfect competition and bilateral monopoly. So here uh, in perfect competition parity and efficiency criterion held well in perfect competition. Uh, because in a perfectly competitive market, resources are allocated in such a way that it is impossible to make any individual better off without making someone else worse off, so which is the core of parity efficiency. So this happens in uh, perfect competition because uh, farms produce at lowest possible cost and prices equal to marginal cost leading to efficient allocation of resources prices is equal to marginal cost in perfect competition and consumers and producers cannot improve their situation without negatively impacting others so here in perfect competition parity and efficiency criterion holds uh, held well then question number 83 which of the following statement is not true which of the statement is not true so first one is the Q ratio was popularized by Nobel laureate James Tobin and invented by Nicholas Calder. Yes, Q ratio popularized by James Tobin and invented by Nicholas Calder. And the Q ratio is also known as Tobin's Q ratio measures where a farm or an aggregate market is relatively over or undervalued. This is also true according to Q value. Then uh, third, the Q ratio relies on the concept of market value and replacement value. Yes, Q value relies on the concept of market value and replacement value. Then fourth one, the simplified Q ratio is the equity market value divided by expected value. No, this is incorrect. Option D is incorrect because Q ratio is equal to total market share of a firm by total assets. So total uh, market share of a firm by total, total asset it is called as Q ratio. So here it is not equity market divided by expected value. So option D is incorrect. So here not true is option D. Then question number 84 identify the correct statement. Uh, correct statement. First one is expectation augmented Phillips curve would shift in such a way that in the long run a higher rate of inflation would result in changes in unemployment no this is incorrect according to expectation augmented Phillips curve uh, according to the expectation augmented Phillips curve in the long run there is no trade-off there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment in the long run so the Phillips curve becomes vertical in the long run so in the long run Phillips curve become vertical in the short run there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment but in the long run um, there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment so in the long run uh, Phillips curve is vertical so this is not true according to the uh, long run the Phillips curve becomes vertical in the long run so meaning that 
changes in inflation do not affect the natural rate of unemployment therefore a higher rate of inflation does not result in a permanent change in unemployment so higher rate of inflation does not uh, we can say that it uh, doesn't result in a permanent change in unemployment so option 1 is incorrect then option 2 natural rate of unemployment is that rate of unemployment which is consistent with labor market equilibrium and at which the prices price level would would be stable yes natural rate of unemployment in nru it is the rate of unemployment which is consistent with labor market equilibrium and which is the price level could be stable labor market equilibrium is such labor market equilibrium and the price level uh, could be stable here so option 2 is correct then the natural rate of unemployment is determined by the real factors which affect the amount of frictional and structural unemployment in the economy yes this is also true according to natural rate of unemployment it is determined by real factors which are affect the amount of frictional and structural unemployment in the economy so option 2 and 3 are correct so here in question number 84 option b is correct then question number 85 given the consumption function c is equal to 0 0.60 y and the investment function then i is equal to 200 minus 0 0.40 i and the equation of is function will be so here we have to find out the equation of is function so we know that uh, we know that the is function represents the equilibrium in the goods market equilibrium in the goods market where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate output in the goods market aggregate demand is equal to aggregate output so uh, we write it as y is equal to c plus i y is equal to c plus i so here given y y is equal to c consumption is equal to 0.60 y plus i i is equal to 200 minus 0 0.40 i i value is equal to 200 minus 0 0.4 i c is equal to 0 0.60 y so y is equal to c plus i here c is equal to 0 0.60 y and i value is 200 minus 0 0.40 i so to solve for the y we subtract 0 0.60 y from both side to solve uh, the equation so you have to subtract 0 0.60 y from both sides so y minus 0 0.60 y is equal to 0 0.60 y minus 0 0.60 y into 200 minus 0 0.40 i o then here final answer is equal to y minus 0 0.60 y first equation is equal to y minus 0 0.60 y is equal to this cancel then 200 minus 0 0.40 i so here y means 1y 1y minus 0 0.60 y is equal to uh, 1 minus 0 0.60 is equal to 0 0.40 so 0 0.40 y is equal to 200 minus 0 0.40 i so to solve this equation we have to divide uh, 0 0.40 in both side so first one is 0.40 y by 0 0.40 is equal to 200 minus 0 0.40 i by 0 0.40 so here it is cancelled 0 0.40 0 0.40 so y is equal to 200 by 0 0.40 200 by 0 0.40 is equal to value is 500 minus 0 0.40 by 0 0.40 it cancel then only i rest is i so y is equal to 500 minus i so y value is equal to 500 minus i so option b is right here then question number 86 assertion and reason based question first one is assertion Akun's law is intend, intended to tell us how much a country's gross domestic product may be lost when the unemployment rate is above its natural rate this is true 
the assertion is true because akun's law describes the relationship between unemployment and gdp gross domestic product so it shows how much a country's gdp may fall when unemployment is unemployment is above its natural rate so the law is intended to qualify the loss in output due to unemployment deviation from the natural rate so here assertion is right then reason is an economy experience a 2 percent point increase in unemployment for every 2 percent point decrease in gdp from its long run level also called as potential gdp no not 2 percent uh, this is incorrect because akun's law typically states that for every 1 percent point increase this is not 2 percent point increase 1 percent 1 percent point increase uh, uh, point increase in the unemployment rate a country gdp tends to be roughly 2 percent below its potential gdp so not 2 percent point increase in unemployment for the every 2 percent point decrease in gdp so here this is not 2 to 1 to receive so the explanation provided in the region doesn't correctly reflect the relationship described by akun's law so here option uh, region is incorrect but assertion is correct so assertion is correct a is true and r is false option c is right here then question number 87 one tailed test can be used to test hypothesis about regression coefficient when when we use one tailed test when a large significant level of 5% is uh, used no this is incorrect then uh, when the estimated coefficient has a sign predicted by the theory yes the option number b is correct when one tail test can be used to test hypothesis about regression coefficient when the estimated coefficient has a sign predicted by the theory so one tail test uh, these are used when the researcher has a specific direction in mind for the estimated coefficient based on the prior theory or evidences so a specific uh, uh, direction in the mind no, for the researcher For, for example you can take uh, if theory predicts that a coefficient should be positive then a one tail test would focus on testing whether the coefficient is significantly greater than zero so this contrast with a two tail test uh, which tests the possibility of conflicting between either significant positive or negative but it is uh, one tail test so uh, either it is positive a greater than 0 or less than 0 thus one tail test are appropriate when there is a theoretical reason to expect the coefficient to have a specific sign either positive or negative so uh, it is uh, not uh, we can say um, uh, mix of positive or negative it is uh, either positive or negative so this is called as one tail test the estimated coefficient has a sign particular sign predicted by the theory then question number 88 the f test can be uh, can test a variety of hypothesis uh, such as whether whether an individual regression coefficient is statistically significant in f test an individual regression coefficient is statistically significant yes this is correct individual regression coefficient is statistically significant uh, while uh the t test is the typically used to test the significance of an individual regression coefficient so the f test can also be used in case whether the test it involves multiple coefficient or even one coefficient in the specific context like testing a restricted model or uh, an unrestricted model so this is correct here then for f test all partial slope coefficient at zero yes this is also right all partial slope coefficient at zero how the f test is commonly used to test whether all partial slopes coefficient at zero which evaluates the overall significance of the regression model it evaluates the overall significance of the regression model so it is also correct then statement 3 two or more coefficient are statistically equal in f test two or more coefficient are statistically equal this is also correct because the f test can be used to test whether two or more coefficient are are statistically equal or not so option 3 is correct then option 4 the coefficient satisfy some linear restriction yes this is also right according to f test the 
एफ टेस्ट इज यूज टू टेस्ट वेदर कॉफिशेंट साटिस्फाई सम लिनियर रेस्ट्रिक्शन लाइक जॉइंट रेस्ट्रिक्शन और स्पेसिफिक लिनियर रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन कॉफिशेंट सो इट इज ऑल्सो राइट अकॉर्डिंग टू एफ टेस्ट सो वन टू थ्री फॉर ऑल आर राइट फॉर द एफ टेस्ट कैन बी ए वेराइटी ऑफ हाइपोथिस सच इज वेदर ऑल द बिलो ऑप्शन आर राइट सो ऑप्शन डी इज करेक्ट हियर वन टू थ्री फोर देन क्वेश्चन नंबर एट्टी नाइन इन मल्टी कलिनियरिटी इफ मल्टी कलिनियरिटी इज परफेक्ट द रिग्रेसन कॉफिशेंट ऑफ एक्स वेरिएबल आर सो द रिग्रेसन कॉफिशेंट ऑफ एक्स वेरिएबल आर इनडिटर्मिनेट एंड देयर स्टैंडर्ड्स एरर आर इनफाइनाइट येस द रिग्रेसन कॉफिशेंट ऑफ एक्स वेरिएबल्स आर इनडिटर्मिनेट इन मल्टीकुलरिटी एंड देयर स्टैंडर्ड्स एरर आर इनफाइनाइट सो ऑप्शन ए इज राइट हियर हाउ बिकॉज परफेक्ट मल्टीकुलरिटी अकोर्स वेन वन प्रेडिक्टर वेरिएबल इन ए रिग्रेसन मडेल इज एन एक्जैक्ट लिनियर कम्बिनेसन अफ अदर प्रेडिक्टर भेरिएबल्स सो इन दिस केस द मेट्रिक्स यूज टू एस्टिमेट द रिग्रेसन कफिशेंस टिपिकली द डिजाइन मेट्रिक्स इज नट इन एविटेबल इन भेरिएबल सो एज ए रेजल्ट द रिग्रेसन कफिशेन कैन नट भी यूनिकली डिटरमाइंड मेकिंग दे इनडिटर्मिनेट एंड द स्टैंडर्ड सेरर अफ द रिग्रेसन कफिशेन बिकम इनफाइनाइट बिकज द भेरियंस अफ दिस कफिशेंट्स आर अनबाउंडेड इन द प्रेजेन्स अफ परफेक्ट मल्टी कलिनियरिटी दस परफेक्ट मल्टी कलिनियरिटी लीड्स टू ए सिचुएसन हर द रिग्रेसन कफिशेंट आर इनडिटर्मिनेट एंड द स्टैंडार्ड एरर्स आर इनफाइनाइट सो अपसन ए इज रईट इयर देन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइंटी हुई वन अफ द फलोईंग इज नट ए मेथड टू डिटेक्ट हेटेर स्केडास्टिटी सो वी हेव टू फाइंड आउट हुई इज नट ए मेथड अफ to detect heteroskedasticity so question number 90 first one is graphical method so graphical method it involves plotting the residual against the fitted values or against one of the independent variable to visually inspect if there is an there is a pattern indicating heteroskedasticity so this is a method to detect heteroskedasticity graphical method then second one is सेकेंड वन इज कैलिन्स रूल अफ थम सो दिस् इज नट ए मेथड टू डिडक्ट डिटेक्ट हेटेरोस्केडास्टिटी दिस् इज नट ए मेथड टू डिटेक्ट हेटेरोस्केडास्टिटी तो अपसन बी इज इनकरेक्ट दे स्पीयरमेन्स रैंक कॉरिलेशन टेस्ट दिस् इज ए मेथड टू डिटेक्ट हेटेरोस्केडास्टिटी स्पीयरमेन्स रैंक कॉरिलेशन टेस्ट दिस टेस्ट कैन बी यूज टू चेक for correlation between residuals and a variable which may help in detecting uh, detecting heteroskedasticity so spearman rank correlation used for heteroskedasticity then fourth one park test so in park test also this is a formal formal statistical test specifically designed to detect heteroskedasticity by regressing the square residual on the explanatory variables so park test is also used to de- detect heteroskedasticity graphical method spearman rank correlation test park test these all are used to detect heteroskedasticity but kellin's rule of thumb is not used for heteroskedasticity so here option b is right then question number 91 identify the component in assessing sense capability approach sense means amartya sense capability approach so we have to identify the components in assessing sense capability approach first one is the importance of real freedoms in the assessment of a person's advantage so this is a key component of amartya sense capability approach which emphasizes assessing well-being based on individuals actual freedom and opportunities to achieve value functioning so option 1 is correct here then option 2 individual differences in the ability to transform resources into uh, uh, into valuable activities so this reflect another central idea in amartya sen's approach which acknowledges that people have different capabilities to convert resources into valuable outcomes or functioning so option 2 is correct then option 3 the bivariate nature of activities giving rise to happiness 
this is not specifically a part of sense capability approach because sense focus more on a multidimensional perspective of capabilities and functionings rather than a bivariate approach linking activities directly to uh, happiness so it is not used uh, amartya sen not used bivariate nature he used uh, multi uh, factors multidimensional perspective so option 3 is incorrect then option 4 a balance of materialistic and non materialistic factors in evaluating human welfare so this aligns with amartya sen's approach which considered both material resources and non material resources factors in evaluating human welfare so for a human welfare both materialistic and non materialistic factors are required so option 4 is uh, right according to amartya sen's capability approach so option 1 2 and 4 option 1 2 and 4 are correct so option c is correct here then question number 92 as per the herodomer growth model if the actual growth rate is greater than the warranted growth rate if actual growth rate ga is greater than gw means actual growth rate greater than warranted growth rate what happens when actual growth rate greater than warranted growth rate it creates inflation in the economy the economy will experience a inflation how the herodomer growth model posits that the warranted growth rate is the rate at which an economy's capital stock is growing in a way that maintains equilibrium between investment and saving suppose if the actual growth rate exceeds this warranted growth rate then what happens it implies that the economy is growing faster than the rate of required to keep investment economy is growing than the uh, required rate so faster than the rate required to keep investment and saving in balance so this can lead to upward pressure on prices so it creates upward pressure on prices as aggregate demand exceed aggregate supply here aggregate demand exceed aggregate supply because actual growth rate uh, greater than warranted growth rate so aggregate demand greater than aggregate supply uh, so it uh, creates or it res uh, resulting in inflation so here the economy will experience an inflation situation when actual growth rate greater than warranted growth rate so option b is right here then question number 93 which of the following is not an assumption of solos growth model so uh, which is not an assumption of solos growth model first one is linear homogeneous production function this is an assumption of the solo growth model it assumes that the production function is homogeneous of degree 1 linear means homogeneous of degree 1 which implies constant return to scale linear homogeneous production function it uh, represent constant return to scale in the economy so option a is correct then second option saving is the constant fraction of the level of output so this is also an assumption of the solo growth model saving is the constant fraction of the level of output it assumes that the saving rate is a constant proportion of output saving rate is equal to constant proportion of output this is also an assumption of solo model then uh, option number c the growth rate of labor force is endogenously determined no this is incorrect not endogenously determined growth rate of labor force because this is not an assumption of solo growth model in this solo model the growth rate of the labor force is considered exogenous not endogenous it is exogenous so meaning that it is determined output it determined outside the model it is not uh, inside the model it determined by outside the model and it is not influenced by the model's internal dynamics so it is not endogenously determined it is exogenously determined um, according to solos assumption so option c is incorrect then option d labor and capital are substitutable for each other yes labor and so capital are substitutable to each other it means in, um, this is an assumption of the solo growth model it assumes that labor and capital can be substituted for each other to some extent as represented by the production function so option a b d are correct but option c is incorrect so what is not an assumption option c is not an assumption of solo growth model ha uh, 94 assessment and reason based question so assessment is 
डिपेडेन्सी थिरी प्रपोज दट द पवर्टी एंड बैकवर्डनेस अफ पोअर कंट्रीज आर कज बै देर पेरीफेरियाल पजिशन द पवर्टी एंड बैकवर्डनेस अफ द पोअर कंट्रीज आर कज बै देर पेरीफेरियाल पजिशन ये दिस् इज रईट बिकज डिपेडेन्सी थिरी एरग्यूज दैट द पवर्टी एंड बैकवर्डनेस अफ द पोअर कंट्रीज और द पेरीफेरी आर द रेजल्ट अफ देयर डिपेडेट पजिशन इन द ग्लोबल कैपिटालीस्ट सिस्टम सो दिस् कंट्रीज आर एक्सप्लोटेड बै वेल्दीर वेल्दीयर नेसन और रिच कंट्रीज हुईज परपिचुएट्स देयर अंडर डेभलपमेंट सो हियर एसेसन इज रईट एकर्डिंग टू डिपेडेन्सी थिरी देन रिजिन रिजिन इज सिंस द कैपिटालीस्ट वर्ल्ड सिस्टम इवल्व द डिस्टिंगसन बिट्वीन द सेट्राल एंड द पेरीफेरियाल नेसन्स हेज ग्रोन एंड डाइवर्स ये आफ्टर कैपिटालीस्ट वर्ल्ड द डिस्टिंगसन बिट्वीन सेन्ट्राल एंड पेरीफेरियाल नेसन्स हेज ग्रोन एंड डाइवर्स द इवाल्युएसन अफ द कैपिटालीस्ट वर्ल्ड सिस्टम हेज लेड टू एन इनक्रिजिंग डाइर्जेन्स बिट्वीन कोर और सेन्ट्राल एंड द पेरीफेरियाल नेसन ओथ कोर नेसन और टप नेसन कोर नेसन बिकमिंग मोर एडभांसड एंड द पेरीफेरियाल नेसन रिमेनिंग अंडर डेभलप्ड सो दिस् ग्रोईंग डिस्टिंगसन सपोर्ट्स द डिपेडेन्सी थिरी भ्यू अन् हाउ द ग्लोबल इकोनोमिक सिस्टम इम्पैक्ट डेभलपमेंट सो अपसन रिजिन इज अल्सो करेक्ट सो हियर बथ एसेस एंड रिजिन आर ट्रु एंड आर इज द करेक्ट एक्सप्लेनेसन अफ ए अपसन ए इज रईट हियर देन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइंटी फाइव द कंपनी हुईज ओन द सेल बीड अफ इंडियाज नेशनाल कैरियर एयर इंडिया सो हुईज कंपनी ओन द सेल बीड अफ इंडियाज एयर इंडिया एयर इंडिया सेल बीड हू ओन द सेल बीड अफ एयर इंडिया टाटा मोटर्स टेल्की प्राइट लिमिटेड टाटा एयर और टाटा एसिया टेलेसि टेलेसि प्राइट लिमिटेड ओन द बीड अफ एयर इंडिया सो अपसन बी इज रईट टेलेसि प्राइट लिमिटेड इट इज ए सब्सिडरी अफ द टाटा मोटर्स इट इज ए सब्सिडरी अफ द टाटा मोटर्स ग्रुप बट बीड ओन बै द टेलेसि प्राइट लिमिटेड नट बै टाटा मोटर्स इट इज ए सब्सिडरी अफ टाटा मोटर्स सो अपसन बी इज रईट हियर एंड इट इज ओन द बीड टू एक्वयर इंडियाज नेशनाल कैरियर एयर इंडिया इन टू थाउजेंड इलेवेन इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन टू इन द बीड अफ एयर इंडिया टेलसी प्राइट लिमिटेड सो अपसन बी इज करेक्ट देन नाइंटीन सिक्स नंबर क्वेश्चन हुईज एमंग द फलोईंग कमिटीज सजेस्ट टू एस्टाब्लीश इन्सुरेन्स रेगुलेटरी अथरीटी अफ इंडिया आई आर ए आई इन्सुरेन्स अथर रेगुलेटरी इन्सुरेन्स रेगुलेटरी अथरीटी अफ इंडिया आई आर ए आई दंडेकर कमिटी मल्होत्रा कमिटी रंगराजन कमिटी दत्ता कमिटी सो द मल्होत्रा कमिटी अफिसीयी नन एज कमिटी अन् रिफर्मस इन द इन्सुरेन्स सेक्टर इट व्वाज एस्ट सो हियर मल्होत्रा कमिटी सो मल्होत्रा कमिटी इज रईट द मल्होत्रा कमिटी अफिसीयी नन एज कमिटी अन् रिफर्मस इन द इन्सुरेन्स सेक्टर इट व्वाज एस्टाब्लीस इन नाइनटीन नाइंटी फोर एंड रेकमेंडेड द एस्टाब्लीसमेंट अफ द आई आर डी ए आई आर डी ए आई आर डी ए फुल फ्रम इज इन्सुरेन्स रेगुलेटरी एंड डेभलपमेंट अथरीटी इन्सुरेन्स रेगुलेटरी एंड डेभलपमेंट अथरीटी इन इंडिया टू रेगुलेट एंड डेभलप द इन्सुरेन्स सेक्टर सो बै मल्होत्रा कमिटी आई आर डी ए डेभलप इन्सुरेन्स रेगुलेटरी डेभलपमेंट अथरीटी सो हियर अपसन बी इज रईट देन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइंटी सेवेन हुईज कंट्री हेज एडप्टेड ग्रोस नेशनाल हैप्पीनेस इन अर्डर टू डिफाइन द इंडेक्स अफ वेलबिंग अफ इट्स सिटीजेन सो to define the well-being of the citizens uh, which country adopted gross national happiness gross national happiness means overall happiness not only in uh, uh, economically overall development is called as gross national happiness so which country adopted australia norway sri lanka bhutan bhutan right option is bhutan because bhutan is known for adopting the concept of gross national happiness as a measure of well-being and development so uh, it focus on various holistic well-being of its citizen like uh, uh, spirituality spiritual emotional spiritual well-being emotional well-being then uh, social factor social factors oh, all uh, social factor economic factors uh, 
सो दीज आर वेरियस फैक्टर्स इनक्लूडेड इन द ग्रॉस नेशनल हैप्पीनेस रेदर देन जस्ट इकोनॉमिक इंडिकेटर्स इट फोकस ऑन ऑल इंडिकेटर्स स्पिरिचुअल इमोशनल सोशियल इकोनॉमिक सो ऑल इंडिकेटर्स आर इनक्लूडेड इन द ग्रॉस नेशनल हैप्पीनेस इंडेक्स सो इट इज फास्ट एडोप्टेड बाय कंट्री भूटान देन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइंटी एट द कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज थियोरी इज बेस ऑन लेबर थियोरी ऑफ वैल्यू येस कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज थियोरी इज बेस ऑन लेबर थियोरी ऑफ वैल्यू सो कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज थियोरी इट वॉज डेवलप्ड बाय हुम डेविड रिकार्डो डेविड रिकार्डो कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज थियोरी इन एटीन सेवेंटी इन एटीन सेवेंटी कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज थियोरी वॉज डेवलप्ड बाय डेविड रिकार्डो इन एटीन सेवेंटीन इट इज बेस ऑन द लेबर थियोरी ऑफ वैल्यू एंड द थियोरी Uh, what the theory explain uh, competitive advantage theory this theory explains the benefit of international trade by attributing them to differences in relative opportunity cost of producing the same commodities between countries so ricardo's theory states that countries should specialize in in a certain class of products for the export while importing the rest so this is called as comparative advantage theory uh, uh, it was based on लेबर थियोरी ऑफ वैल्यू देन क्वेश्चन नंबर 99 एज पर द स्टप्लर सामुएलसन थियोरम द इम्पोजिशन ऑफ ए टैरिफ बाय ए नेशन कजेस द रियल इनकम ऑफ द नेशंस एबेंडेंट फैक्टर टू राइज स्केयर फैक्टर टू राइज और स्केयर फैक्टर टू फॉल और स्केयर एंड एबेंडेंट फैक्टर्स टू राइज सो एकडिंग टू स्टप्लर सामुएलसन स्टप्लर सामुएलसन थियोरी द इम्पोजिशन ऑफ ए टैरिफ बाय ए नेशन कजेस द रियल इनकम ऑफ द नेशन केयर फैक्टर टू राइज हाउ नकॉर्डिंग टू स्टप्लर सामुएलसन थियोरम ए नेशन इम्पोजिशन ऑफ ए टैरिफ कैन कॉज द रियल इनकम ऑफ इट्स केयर फैक्टर टू राइज सो द थियोरम इज ए पार्ट अफ हेक्सर ऑयल इन ट्रेड थियोरी स्टप्लर सामुएलसन थियोरी इट इज ए पार्ट अफ हेक्सर ऑयल इन थियोरी एक्सरोलिन एचओ थ्योरी एक्सरोलिन थ्योरी ऑफ ट्रेड एंड इट डिस्क्राइब द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द रिलेटिव प्राइस ऑफ द आउटपुट एंड रिलेटिव फैक्टर रिटर्न्स सो इट स्टेट्स दैट व्हेन द रिलेटिव प्राइस ऑफ ए गुड इंक्रीजेस द रियल रिटर्न टू द फैक्टर यूज्ड मोस्ट इन इट्स प्रोडक्शन विल आल्सो इंक्रीज सो स्केयर फैक्टर टू राइज इज द राइट ऑप्शन फॉर स्टप्लर सामुएलसन थ्योरम देन 100 क्वेश्चन intra industry trade refers to trade in so intra industry trade what is intra industry trade now it is uh, refers to trade in differential product homogeneous product trade based on economies of scale or heterogeneous product so intra intra industry trade refers to the trade in differential product product differentiation uh, when product differentiation arises uh, intra industry trade uh, occur so Inter industry trade it refers to trade between countries involving the exchange of similar but different sector product within the same industry so this type of trade often occurs when countries export and import products that are not identical but are variation of the same type of product so such as different models of cars or different types of electronics these are the different uh, um, example of differentiated products so uh, this is in contrast to the inter industry trade so inter industry trade where countries exchange entirely different type of product but in intra industry trade people exchange they exchange their uh, products so this is called as differentiated products then question number 101 marshall learner condition states that the sum of the elasticities of demand for a country's exports and its demand for imports has to be demand for export and imports has to be according to malsar has to be uh, less than no greater than unity if devolution is to have a beneficial effect on the country's trade balance option b is right here because marshall learner condition state that for a country devaluation or we can say depreciation of a country's currency to improve its trade balance the sum of the price elasticities of demand for exports and imports must be greater than 1 the sum of the uh, 
price elasticity of demand for export and imports must be greater than one this means that the combined responsiveness of exports and imports quantities to changes in their prices must be sufficiently high to ensure that the increase in export revenues and reduction in import expenditures will outweigh the initial worsening of the trade balance due to the higher cost of imports so uh, it indicates greater than unity if devaluation is to have a beneficial effect on a country's trade balance so option b is correct here then question number 102 assessment reason based question assessment is market collapse start with consumers who want to buy goods from an on familiar market who are willing to pay the price of an average quality good available so first assessment it describe a scenario where market collapse begins with consumers paying the price of an average quality good suggesting a problem with information or quality signaling so assessment is correct here according to the statement assessment is correct here then reason reason is partic participants with key information might participate selectively in trades at the expense of other parties who do not have the same information yes those who um, uh, got more information they are uh, um, uh, ready to uh, trade uh, because uh, it describe how asymmetric information can lead to selective trading where participants with better information exploit those with less information uh, so the participants with greater information or better information exploit on the less information parties which can contribute to market collapse so reason is also right here so both a and r are correct and r is the correct explanation of a. so here option a is right then question number 103 the lemon problem refers to the issues that arise regarding the value of an investment or product due to full information asymmetric information rational information or all of them so lemon problem arises in the when asymmetric information arises asymmetric means um, one party has more information and other party has less information and uh, lemon's problem uh, market is the market where old car sold um, buy and sold in the uh, market old car market uh, lemon market us old car market is called as lemon so in this market uh, asymmetric information arises so how asymmetric in, uh, uh, information er because the lemon problems it is a concept introduced by jeers uh, akerlof it is a concept introduced by jeers a k e r l o f akerlof George Akerlof uh, introduced the concept of lemon problem and uh, it refers to the issue that arises when sellers have more information about the quality of a product than the buyer so seller has more information than the buyer so this asymmetry can lead to a market where high quality goods are undervalued and low quality goods or uh, lemon are overvalued high quality goods are undervalued and low quality goods are overvalued resulting in market inefficiencies and potentially market collapse so this problem is specifically associated with asymmetric information so option b is right here then question number 104 identify the correct statement so here we have to identify the correct statement first one is rational expectation hypothesis states that individuals base their decisions on human rationality yes this is right individual based their decision uh, according to their human rationality and information available to them and their past experiences yes uh, according to rational expectation hypothesis individual uh, take their decision on human rationality information available to them and their past experiences this is right then second one adapt adaptive expectation hypothesis states people adjust their expectation on what the future will be based on the experiences and events of the recent past so uh, according to the past people expect the future this is also right according to adaptive expectation so what happened in the past according to the past experiences people uh, expect what will be uh, in what will be uh, in the 
फ्यूचर सो इट इज ऑल्सो राइट सो बोथ ऑप्शन वन एंड टू आर करेक्ट सो ऑप्शन सी इज राइट हिर देन वन जीरो फाइव हुईज ऑफ द फॉलोइंग डू नॉट एक्ट एज एन ऑटोमेटिक स्टेबिलाइजर ड्यूरिंग इकोनॉमिक फ्लक्चुएसन ग्रॉस बिजनेस सेविंग इंड्यूस इन्वेस्टमेंट पर्सनल इनकम टैक्स और ट्रांसफर पेमेंट सो क्वेश्चन एक्स फॉर हुईज ऑफ द फॉलोइंग डोंट एक्ट हुईज ऑफ द फॉलोइंग डू नॉट एक्ट एज एन ऑटोमेटिक स्टेबिलाइजर ड्यूरिंग इकोनॉमिक फ्लक्चुएसन सो इंड्यूस इन्वेस्टमेंट इज नॉट एक्ट एज एन ऑटोमेटिक स्टेबिलाइजर बिकॉज इट इज इंड्यूस्ड नॉट ऑटोमेटिक सो पर्सनल बिकॉज हियर इंड्यूस इन्वेस्टमेंट इज जस्ट ऑपोजिट ऑफ ऑटोमेटिक इन्वेस्टमेंट सो ऑटोनोमस इन्वेस्टमेंट इंड्यूस इन्वेस्टमेंट दीज आर डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट सो इंड्यूस इन्वेस्टमेंट डू नॉट एक्ट एज एन ऑटोमेटिक स्टेबिलाइजर ड्यूरिंग इकोनॉमिक फ्लक्चुएसन सो ऑप्शन बी इज राइट हियर देन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन जीरो सिक्स लिक्विडिटी ट्रैप इज ए सिचुएसन इन हुईज लिक्विडिटी ट्रैप सो this is the this is called as the liquidity trap situation so rate of interest is very low we, uh, we can uh, say uh, nearly 2% so uh, people do not uh, no, do not hold money in banks they uh, they are trying to hold money uh, in hand so this is uh, called the liquidity trap situation uh, so in liquidity trap situation monetary policy becomes ineffective yes here in this situation monetary policy is ineffective at a very low rate of interest so uh, in, when rate of interest is very low at the time monetary policy is ineffective here and households prefer to hold cash rather than invest in bonds yes households prefer to hold कैश कैश इन हैंड रेदर देन इन्वेस्ट इन बॉन्ड्स एंड थर्ड वन इज बॉन्ड प्राइस एक्सपेक्ट टू राइज फॉर नो बॉन्ड प्राइस विल फॉल व्हेन मॉनेटरी लिक्विडिटी ट्रैप सिचुएशन एरेजेस बॉन्ड प्राइस डू नॉट एक्सपेक्ट टू राइज इन फ्यूचर सो ऑप्शन सी ऑप्शन थ्री इज इनकरेक्ट हियर एकॉर्डिंग टू लिक्विडिटी ट्रैप सिचुएसन मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी बिकम्स इनइफेक्टिव at very low interest rate and households prefer to hold cash rather than invest it so option 1 and 2 are correct according to liquidity trap situation option 1 and 2 only are correct option b then question number 107 that ricardo barrow effect suggests that when a government tries to stimulate an economy by increasing debt financed government spending debt government spending the aggregate demand shift downward or aggregate demand uh, demand remain unchanged or aggregate demand shift upward aggregate demand uh, shift downward or upward or remain same according to uh, ricardo barrow effect so according to ricardo barrow effect the aggregate demand remain unchanged aggregate demand doesn't change uh, how according to ricardo barrow effect it is also known as the ricardian equivalence theorem ricardo barrow effect or we can say ricardian equivalence theorem it suggests that when a government increases increases debt finance spending individual anticipate that future taxes will rise to repay the debt so as a result they increase their saving to prepare for their future tax offsetting the government's increased spending so consequently aggregate demand remain unchanged because the private sectors increase in savings offset the government's increase in spending so the aggregate demand will remain unchanged according to ricardo barrow effect so option b is right here then question number 108 fundamental resource is also known as basic resource pure resource applied resource no fundamental resource is not uh, applied resource fundamental resource we also known as basic resource we can say it as a basic resource or pure resource so option 1 and 2 are is uh, true for fundamental resource fundamental resource is also known as basic and pure resource because fundamental resource uh, it is a com uh, we can say it is known as basic or uh, pure resource it is aimed at gaining a deeper understanding of fundamental principles and theories without immediate concern for practical application so this type of research is conducted to expand 
नॉलेज एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ साइंटिफिक फेनोमेन सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज बेसिक और प्योर रिसर्च सो ऑप्शन डी इज राइट इयर देन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन जीरो नाइन द फ्रिक्वेन्सी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ए रिसर्च डाटा विथ इट्स सीमेट्रिकल इन सेप सिमिलर टू ए नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बट सेंटर पीक इज मच हायर हियर क्वेश्चन गिवेन इज सेंटर पीक इज मच हायर वेन सेंटर पीक इज मच हायर इट इज कॉल्ड एज लेप्टोकृतिक बिकज द फास्ट वन इज दिस इज कॉल्ड एज प्लेटिकृतिक देन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज मेसोकृतिक देन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज लेप्टोकृतिक सेंट्रल पीक इज मच हायर लेप्टोकृतिक सेंट्रल पीक इज मीडियम मेसोकृतिक सेंट्रल पीक इज फ्लाटर देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज प्लेटिकृतिक एल एम पी लार्ज मीडियम एंड शॉर्ट लार्ज मीडियम एंड शॉर्ट सो एल एम पी लार्ज मीन्स लेप्टोकृतिक एंड मीडियम व्हेन इट इज इन मीडियम इट इज कॉल्ड मेसोकृतिक देन व्हेन इट इज फ्लैट इट इज कॉल्ड प्लेटिकृतिक सो लार्ज इज लेप्टोकृतिक देन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वन जीरो द कन्सेप्ट अफ एक्स एफिसीयसी व्वाज इंट्रोड्यूस बाय सो कन्सेप्ट अफ एक्स एफिसीयसी व्वाज इंट्रोड्यूस बाय हार्वेस्टर लिवेनस्टाइन एज लिवेनस्टाइन सो लिवेनस्टाइन इज द राइट ऑप्शन एक्स एफिशिएंसी कॉन्सेप्ट इंट्रोड्यूस बाय लिवेस्टाइन देन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन 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 द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ बैलेंस ग्रोथ मींस बैलेंस ग्रोथ मींस मोर अटेंशन टू गिवन टू मेट्रो सिटीज नो मोर इन्वेस्टमेंट शुड बी डाइवर्टेड टू की एंड स्ट्रैटेजिक सेक्टर नो डिफरेंट सेक्टर ऑफ द इकोनॉमी ग्रो इन ए हारमोनियस मैनर ये दिस इज द राइट ऑप्शन अकॉर्डिंग टू बैलेंस ग्रोथ डिफरेंट सेक्टर्स ऑफ द इकोनॉमी प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी टर्सरी डिफरेंट सेक्टर्स ऑफ द इकोनॉमी ग्रो इन ए हारमोनियस मैनर सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज बैलेंस ग्रोथ ऑल द सेक्टर्स आर ग्रो इन ए हारमोनियस मैनर ऑल द सेक्टर्स ग्रो एट ए टाइम सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज बैलेंस ग्रोथ देन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वन टू द एनवायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट वाज एनेक्टेड इन एनवायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन एटी फाइव एटी एट एटी सेवेन एक्ट was enacted in 1986 then question number 113 which of the following is a positive externality congestion in the road road jam it is a negative externality air pollution from a factory uh, air pollution it is a negative externality vaccination yes vaccination is a positive externality because it create positive impact to the society all the people are healthy uh, due to vaccination so vaccination is a positive externality then deforestation deforestation uh, it is a negative externality because cut down of trees Uh, less trees available, so it is a negative air pollution, negative congestion of road, road jam, negative. But vaccination is a positive impact to the society. Then one one for as per the budget document, government of Kerala, the fiscal deficit in 2011-12 is estimated to be uh, how many? According to 2021-22. Fiscal uh, deficit is nearly 3.5 percent of gross state domestic product. 3.5. Then question number 115. Which of the following is not a feature of the Kerala model of development? So, which is not a feature of Kerala development model? High literacy and life expectancy rates. Yes, Kerala's literacy rate is high and uh, also life expectancy. Then. highly improved access of healthcare healthcare facilities better healthcare facilities this is also the model of development of kerala then very high birth rate no birth rate uh, is very low uh, not very high then low infant mortality rate yes infant mortality rate is low uh, under uh, kerala model of development by but birth rate uh, um, is not high it is low So option C is correct here. Then question one one six. Capital in the twenty first century was written by capital in the twenty first century uh, written by Thomas Piketty. Uh, Piketty. Thomas Piketty uh, uh, written the book called as Capital in the twenty first century. Thomas uh, Piketty. Then question number one one seven. Which of the following items of expenditure is not a part of the planned expenditure? Agriculture comes under the planned expenditure. Industry comes under the planned expenditure. Public enterprise comes under the planned expenditure. But 
पब्लिक एजुकेशन इट इज नट कम अंडर द प्लान एक्सपेडिचर सो पब्लिक एक्सपेडिचर इज रईट हियर इट इज नन प्लान एक्सपेडिचर पब्लिक एजुकेशन सरी पब्लिक एजुकेशन इज नट कम अंडर द प्लान एक्सपेडिचर सो अपसन बी इज रईट हियर देन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वन एट एट भलेरम टारिफ एट भलेरम मीन्स एकॉर्डिंग टू द वैल्यू टैरिफ इज इम्पोज और टैक्स इम्पोज सो टैरिफ ऑन द यूनिट्स ऑफ द गुड्स नो टैरिफ ऑन द वैल्यू ऑफ द गुड्स इम्पोर्ट येस टैरिफ ऑन द वैल्यू ऑफ द सो सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ टैरिफ और टैक्स ऑन द पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू ऑफ द गुड्स इम्पोर्टेड इट इज कॉल्ड एज एड भलेरम टैरिफ देन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वन नाइन द नोबेल प्राइज फॉर इकोनॉमिक्स टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन वज एवर्डेड टू इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन नोबेल प्राइज वज एवर्डेड टू डेविड कार्ड जसुआ डी एंग्रिस्ट एंड जी डब्ल्यू इम्बेन्स गाइड डब्ल्यू इम इम्बेन्स जे डी एंग्रिस्ट एंड डेविड कार देर गोट नोबेल प्राइज इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन ऑप्शन डी देन टूडेज लास्ट क्वेश्चन द एंजिल कर्व फर ए गिफ एंड गुड इज पजिटिव स्लोप भर्टिकल स्ट्रेट लाइन नेगेटिव स्लोप हरिजेंटाल एंजेल कर् फर गिफ एंड गुड्स गिफ एंड एंजेल कर् फर गिफ एंड गुड्स इज नेगेटिवली स्लोप हाउ हाउ बिकज एंजेल कर् ह्वाट एंजेल कर् सज द एंजेल कर् सज द रिलेसनशिप बिट्वीन द कंज्यूमर्स इनकम एंड द क्वांटिटी अफ गुड्स कंज्यूम कंज्यूमर्स इनकम एंड क्वांटिटी अफ गुड्स कंज्यूमड सो इनकम एंड कंजप्स रिलेसनशिप बिटवीन कंज्यूमर्स इनकम एंड द क्वांटिटी ऑफ गुड्स कंज्यूम एंड द एंजेल कर् फॉर एन इनफीरियर गुड लाइक यू कैन से गिफ एंड गुड्स गिफ एंड गुड्स इज अल्सो टाइप ऑफ इनफीरियर गुड सो द एंजेल कर् फॉर एन इनफीरियर गुड लाइक गिफ एंड गुड्स हेज ए नेगेटिव स्लॉप दिस मीन्स दैट एज इनकम इनक्रीजेस द ऑप्टिमल कंजप्शन ऑफ द गुड्स डिक्रीजेस वेन इनकम एंड ऑप्टिमल कंजप्शन ऑफ गुड्स व्हेन इनकम इंक्रीजेस व्हेन इनकम इंक्रीजेस देन द ऑप्टिमल कंजप्शन द कंजप्शन ऑफ द गुड्स डिक्रीजेस व्हेन इनकम इंक्रीजेस द ऑप्टिमल कंजप्शन ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर गुड्स और इनफेरियर गुड डिक्रीजेस सो द एंजल कर् फॉर ए गिफ एंड गुड इज नेगेटिवली स्लॉप सो हियर ऑप्शन सी इज दिस इज ऑल अबाउट फॉर द टू डेज आई होप यू लाइक द वीडियो इफ यू लाइक प्लीज लाइक comment in the comment section and share with your friends so that all are getting benefited from this video and those who come for the first time please subscribe to this channel and those who do not watch the previous videos till now they can watch uh, in the playlist i have given the playlist in the description box so that you can watch all the previous year uh, previous uh, videos previous uh, series part 1 part 2 videos of kella set uh, so that you got benefit from all those videos so thank you jai jagannath